Ağaç ilişim uçumda. Çeyni okuma konuyla ikiyiz. Ya o yüzden. Apologies for that. We're up now, Madam Mayor. And I think we might restart. I don't think we've got any of it out on the first attempt, so we might start from the beginning if that's okay. Yes, please. Apologies. Evening, councillors and gallery, and including the virtual gallery. Please be upstanding for acknowledgement of country and prayer. I would like to acknowledge and extend my appreciation for the Jaja Wurrung people, the traditional owners of the land that we are standing on today. Today, we pay our respect to leaders and elders past, present and emerging, for they hold the memories and traditions, the culture and the hopes of all Jaja Wurrung people. We express our gratitude in the sharing of this land, our sorrow for the personal, spiritual and cultural costs of that sharing and our hope that we may walk together in harmony and in the spirit of healing. Now for the prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to present in this council, direct and guide our deliberations. We ask you, ask you to grant us wisdom and sensitivity as we deal with the business of Central Goldfield Shire. May each decision that we make advance the well-being of all our residents. This we pray. Amen. Amen. Starting on our agenda, agenda items two and three, which is apologies and leave of absence, there are none. Uh, disclosure of conflict of interest, councillors, are there any conflicts of interest? No conflicts? Thank you. Confirmation uh, of the minutes of the previous meeting. However, 5.1 will need to be read out as there is an amendment in that item. So the purpose is to present the confirmation of the minutes of you know, the ordinary meeting held on the 22nd of November. Do we have a mover? 5.1. Councillor Sproul. Hey, Madam Mayor, I'd like to move that Council confirms the minutes of the ordinary Council meeting held on the 22nd of November uh, 2022 with the following amendment relating to item 8.4 Civil Engineering Consultancy Panel, contract G1643-22, uh, the changing of the contract and name from bespoke to Keith David Biglin. Thank you, Councillor Sprout. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Villiers. Yes. Point of order. Was Councillor Villiers here on that meeting day? I think she was. Were you here on the uh... present? Grace, Elizabeth, Jeff, Chris, and Wayne. Oh, okay. I think I think you're on holidays. Oh. Yeah. My apologies, um, Councillor De Villiers was not in attendance at that meeting, which we all forgot. Um, Councillor Lovett, you will second. Councillor Sproul, would you like to speak at the meeting? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, look, this is merely um, so the name uh, bespoke wasn't actually registered with the ABN of the company, and it's hence the name change on the uh, recorded minutes to Keith David Biggin. Thank you. You'll be noted that the other minutes of that meeting are all read and correct. Item four, five points. No, eight, and now we're going to the office. Sorry. What this one? Oh, yes. Let's vote on that motion. All for that motion, the five point one. Going through the meal, I have to abstain. I wasn't here. Yes. So, thank you. And those against, nil. So that's unanimous. Thank you. 
We now go to uh, delegated advisory committees. There are no reports there. Petitions, no petitions. Now to officers report, item number eight. Item point eight, eight point one, council meeting dates. Can I have a mover for the meeting dates? Councillor de Villiers. Yes. Um, um, I would like to move that council got following dates for council meetings in 2023. Um, there's a long list of dates, so I have to read them all. Yes, if you could say it. Tuesday, 28th February, Tuesday, 28th of March, Tuesday, 2nd May, Tuesday, 30th May, Tuesday, 27th June, Tuesday, 25th July, Tuesday, 22nd August, Tuesday, 26th September, Tuesday, 24th October. On Tuesday, 21, 1st of November, is the meeting to appoint a meeting. Tuesday, 28th of November, and then the last one for the year will be Tuesday, the 19th of December, 2023. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Can we have a second? Mm -hmm. Councillor Long, would you like to speak to that motion? Uh, Thank you, Madam um, It is um, good to have the dates um, predetermined before the year starts, um, because once the year starts and you um, get in the cycle, um, the time is, it's amazing how time is goes by. So thank you to the officers who prepared all of these dates for us. And uh, I'm looking forward to another year full of um, engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor Long, would you like to add? Nothing further. Nothing further, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Now moving on to. Oh, yes, I keep getting the vote. I'll vote, so Councillor. Sorry, Madam Mayor, can I just speak to that uh, motion just quickly? Um, just most notably, we have, I don't know what the microphone turns off and on, but anyway. Um, our council meeting, our general council meetings, usually on the fourth Tuesday of every month. The notable one here is the Tuesday, the second of May, because the fourth Tuesday of April falls on Anzac Day. It's been pushed back. Okay, thank you for that. All right, we'll take this to a vote. All those in favour? Against? That's unanimous. Just on a process, I'm not sure if these microphones are working. I'm getting any green lights. We're getting green. No, getting red light. Red lights. I'm just wondering whether we're able to be heard or whether this is an issue. Do we have that other microphone on there? Is that a switch? Um, <clears throat> we can hear us. Okay. It's like, yes, I'm sorry. I'll just say, you know, it's... The news is okay. I think we've got a lot of tests. I think we'll rest of that, but... I'll just pass this around. And we'll All right, moving on to item 8.2, planning, planning scheme amendment, C34, G, CG, OL, Omnibus. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd uh, be happy to uh, move the motion that Council make changes to amendment C034, CGOL in response to submissions in accordance with attachment one, amendment C34 CGOL, a submission summary, and two, request the Minister for Planning appoint an independent planning panel to consider unresolved requests and provide advice to council. Thank you, council members. Getting in before I have a chance to introduce it. Can I have a second of that motion, please? Councillor De Villiers. Councillor Meadows Taylor, would you like to speak to? Uh, thanks, thanks, Madam Mayor. I'm sorry for, for upstaging you. Isn't that in the, in the, in the anxious desire to get a microphone? Um, yes, look, I'm, I'm delighted to move this motion. At first appearance, this might seem a lot of technical. Uh, that seems very boring. It couldn't be further from the truth. This is about a brilliant future for our Shire. 
This is about growth and opportunity. This is about achieving our vision and addressing our council plan and all the aspirations in it. It also recognises the richness of our built heritage and our natural heritage. Now, the common backbone behind all of that is one document, and that is the Central Goldfields Planning Scheme. And the planning scheme under the Planning Environment Act 1987 needs to be amended every four years. Uh, it was due into and it had its amendment in 2013, but with some disturbances and changes in council and going through administration, uh, there were some unresolved issues. And in 2020, the administrators began a process, uh, which this council's been briefed on regularly since that time, to consolidate a whole range of amendments and changes that are actually needed to the planning scheme to achieve the future and achieve the, the important objectives that we actually need to secure for, for, our, for our future. And this uh, omnibus amendment does, does this and achieves this. It's been the subject of extensive consultation over time, and we have six submissions from uh, referral agencies and one from a landowner. Now, the process that's set down to deal with these things is when that happens, uh, council will then seek the appointments uh, through Planning Panels Victoria of a, a, a planning panel. These are specialist uh, either individuals or a small panel, depending on who's, who's appointed, but they're experts who can review the various submissions and uh, concerns and issues and reports to council appropriately. And the, the proposal in the motion is to do just that, to have a planning panel put in place to review the uh, submissions, the concerns, in some cases, uh, uh, proposals that council at this stage has to be accepted so that advice can be provided. And that process would be complete early in 2023 so that, uh, so that the matter then could be the subject of final advice from council to the minister by the mid-2023. So that is, in essence, the proposal. An amount uh, of work that's gone into this is simply immense. It is a real credit to the uh, strategic planning uh, a group that have actually pulled this together. Um, it has, it, it is very, very detailed, but I stress where I start, Madam Mayor, this is about our future. This is the document that will go on to amend our planning scheme. Our planning scheme is set to be that backbone that will deliver uh, in, in a way that we need. As we know, uh, the old saying that, um, uh, that, uh, that old sins cast long shadows. Some of us know that bad planning decisions in the past have created a, uh, some real problems. We'll make sure through this process, we won't have bad planning decisions. We'll have the best planning decisions through, through uh, the best planning scheme. And this omnibus amendment will do just that. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Seconder, would you like to speak this item? Um, I would like to be there. Yeah. Thank you. You reserve the right? I reserve the right. Yes. Okay. Anyone against? Madam Mayor, can I move an amendment to the motion before us, please? Yes. And what will that amendment, amendment be, Councillor? I would like to move that the motion before us be deferred for discussion. Of the planning scheme amendment C34 C GOL until the ordinary council meeting 28th of March 2023. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Do we have a seconder for the amendment? Councillor Murphy, would you like to speak to the amendment, Councillor Lovett? Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> I have been actually given this issue a lot of thought about amending the motion before us. The proposed planning scheme amendment that we're calling an omnibus bill is both incredibly detailed and complex. I have read it several times and to be perfectly honest, 
I have trouble getting my head around all the issues and the potential ramifications. Right here, right now, I have more questions than I have answers. And if it goes to the vote tonight, I would most likely vote no. This planning a scheme amendment will affect council's residential housing decisions for years to come and we'll see a fundamental shift in the focus for council's decision making. That's why I believe it is very important for councillors to be given time to ask questions, to flesh out all the issues. It is called an omnibus bill. I looked up the meaning of omnibus and it states relating to or providing many things at once. And that is my concern. This omnibus bill is big and the changes are big. At the council table, we're already seeing the effects of this amendment to the planning scheme, albeit inadvertently. Some years ago, a young man purchased a parcel of land in Miraburra to develop. He subsequently discovered portion of the land had been zoned incorrectly. Although this zoning is demonstrably wrong, the purchaser has been told nothing can happen until the omnibus bill is approved. On two separate occasions, Council have endorsed the development of land known as 52 Ross Street. The developer has been working with Council as far back as 2018 to get approvals for this parcel of land. This land is now caught in limbo due to the omnibus amendment. There are a number of other planning issues caught up by this amendment waiting decisions. Everything Councillor Meadows Taylor stated in his preamble is correct. This is an important major piece of legislation. My amendment to the motion won't change the legislation as proposed. It will simply give councils time to look more deeply at what's proposed. My concern is that this planning amendment will take years to become law, and that is why we must get it right. Therefore, I urge my fellow councillors to support this amended motion. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Murphy, would you like to respond? Second. I just concur with Councillor Lovett. Yes, I just, just, yes, but, yes, that's right. So you are requesting a deferral of this motion? Yes. Exactly. So from that, anyone else, is there someone against the deferral of this motion? The C-34 omnibus. Robbie, I've asked the officers to respond to what the underlying result may be by pushing this back two months. You certainly can. Is there an officer who could uh, respond to this? Adam, Adam, Give me on that one. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So, um, if this is um, uh, deferred until March, um, it effectively puts back the um, consideration of this by a panel. If, if council would resolve to um, take it to a panel um, by two two more months, um, which then pushes back um, any changes going through for another couple of months as well. So, I mean, effectively, it just it delays. Um, 
for the changes that are proposed in the omnibus um, being adopted by council by for a minimum of two months, depending on the outcome of, of the um, any decisions made in that. Thank you. Is there anyone against the deferral? I would just like to make a point, and I'll stand up here, councillors. Any decision we make around this table affects the Shire. This is a critical, critical piece of work. The omnibus, omnibus is critical to our Shire moving forward, be in accordance with our council plan and our future vision. Now, I urge you, if you do not understand this, you do not vote, vote, you vote for the deferral because that is critical that you have a full understanding of what this means to you and to our Shire. So carefully consider that. I'm going to put the motion, the amendment to the motion of deferral. Those in favour? And that is unanimous. Now. I now go back to the motion. The amendment now becomes a motion. Now the amendment now becomes a motion. No, we're not going, it's not an adjournment, we're just going back to the motion. So who would like to move the motion? Now, no. the, the amendment now has become the motion. Yes. So that motion that you put, that is now the, the motion. motion. The so motion. vote for the motion. So those in favour of the motion, those against, that's affirmative. Thank you. Moving on to the next item, 8.4. November financial reports. 8.3. 8.3, Mr. Page. Audit and risk committee by annual report to council. For the purpose of this, as required by section 54.5 of the Local Government Act 2020, an audit and risk committee report must be prepared and presented to council on the outcomes of the audit and risk committee meetings on a biannual basis. And I have a mover of this report. Councillor Lovett. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to move the council note the biannual report to council from the Audit and Risk Committee and that we thank the members for their ongoing commitment to the function of the Audit and Risk Committee. And I have a second for this. Councillor Murphy. Councillor Lovett, would you like to speak to Thank this? you, Madam Mayor. Um, the Audit Risk Committee is made up of three independent members and two councillors, and they take their role very seriously. In fact, in the last three meetings, we've had 100% attendance at the Audit and Risk Committee meetings, which I think is very commendable. Matters we've considered uh, in the last two meetings have been the Chief Officer's, Chief Executive Officer's report, uh, where we get confidential updates on legal and regu regulatory compliance matters. Central Goldfield Shire Council internal audit process report, which is carried out by AFS chartered accountants. We have been updated on the defined benefits superannuation scheme the CEO credit card and councillor expenses. And additional to that, the committee have received reports on land use activity, electrical line clearance management plan and landfill audit. The meetings generally go for three hours and are very full on, but they're very satisfying. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Councillor Murphy, would you like to speak? I have nothing, Madam. Thank you. Anyone like to speak to this item against or for? Nothing extra. I would like to move this motion. Those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you. 
Moving on to our items uh, 8.4, November financial report. The purpose of this report is to advise Council on the financial performance for the year to date and how it is tracking against the adopted budget, noting any material differences. Can I have a move, please? Councillor Murphy. So the recommendation that Council receives and notes the attached financial finance report for the period to the 30th of November 2022. Not a second, please. Councillor Lovett. Would you like to speak to Councillor Murphy? Uh, yes, I'll just um, speak in a summary page, which I always um, like these financial reports, as most people in the virtual gallery would understand. Um, we're tracking ahead of budget the year to date. This relates to the recognition of previously received grants. This surplus will reduce in line with to spend on these grant funded projects. As this is one I like, the balance sheet remains strong with a strong cash <laughs> position. The cash is anticipated to be drawn down on the, as the capital works program ramps up. Uh, the capital works statement is shown year to date spend of $4.8 million. Finance will be consulting with all departments our, the finance department will be consulting board departments to discuss forecast revenue expenditure for the June 2023 to June, January 2023 to June 2023. This review will also take into account spend income received year to date. Comparison of the budget and any known changes to the budget. And it's important to have comparison to the budget and if and known changes to the budget by the time we get to June. So we know where we really are going. The forecast will be influenced by external events such as the recent floods, which is so true, and subsequent impact of the floods to the business for the businesses for the remainder of the financial year. I'd like to like to um, thank all the uh, those in the finance team in mix uh, mix team, and uh, and we just keep um, kicking goals with the financial report and the finances. So thank you very much. Thank you. Second? Oh, no. oh no, we'll go second of this. Thank you, Councillor Lovett. Would you like to speak? No, thank you. Any questions? Yeah, I would just like it's a request uh, to the financial team. Councillor yeah. 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 So thank you. On on 840 of the officers report, um, there's a whole list of grants that we received that was unbudgeted for. Um, in the past, they all might always be the the dollar value of the grant next to it in, in past reports. And if it's possible to continue with that practice because it, it really helps to know how much money we're getting. Yeah, that's so it's not itemized on any of the other statements. That be noted, officers. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, anyone else like to speak to item 8.4? No? I'll put it to a vote. All in favor of this motion. All in favour, unanimous. Moving on to the next item, which is notice of notice of motion. And our first notice of motion is 9.1, and that's Councillor Jeff Lovett, regards to 52 Cross Street, Maribel. Would you like to speak to your motion? Notice of motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like to move. One, notwithstanding the framework planning work being undertaken for Miraburra North, Harrisbrook and Flagstaff, the eight hectare parcel of land at 52 Ross Street, Miraburra, should be considered as a priority and in isolation for broad hectare residential development as per the application council received in June 2022 to rezone and subdivide the land pursuant to section 96A of the Planning Environment Act 1987. And two, as a matter of urgency, officers are to make the position of council clear in relation to the land at 52 Ross Street, Miraburra, to other government authorities, including the CFA and well. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council Lovett. Can we have a second? Council Murphy. Mm -hmm. Councillor Lovett, would you like to speak to me? Thank you, very, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. 
I actually feel like it's Groundhog Day. This is the third time Council have debated the parcel of land known as 52 Ross Street. On two previous occasions, Council unanimously supported this development, committing Council resources to assist the developer. So I find it disappointing that we are still discussing this issue. I don't intend to go back over the credentials of the developer as this has been done previously. What I want to focus on is the big issue, the critical lack of greenfield residential land in Miraburra proper. As far back as 2012, this parcel of land was identified, and I quote, as the only land remaining in Miraburra for substantial broadacre residential development, end of quote. This contention was again confirmed in supplementary reports in 2014 and again in 2020. Four years ago, the proponent told the Shire he would fund the planning scheme amendment to rezone this land. He has already funded several reports required for the rezoning. All he has asked for in return is council support. How many times must this support be given? I find it unfathomable why we are once again debating this issue. Why aren't we saying to the developer, what can we do to assist you? This development will bring unquestioned benefits to scarce residential land in Miraburra, including tens of millions of dollars of investment, economic activity, and most importantly, jobs. But after all these years, it is now caught up in the omnibus amendment. I have to say that as a councillor, I'm embarrassed by this delay. Thank you, Councillor Robert. Second, would you like to speak to this? Um, as with Councillor as with Councillor Lovett, um, I can just say on it's in March, I think that uh, I got a phone call about an issue with this um, development, and as we've we've actually passed a motion before about supporting wholeheartedly. And if I could say anything that I'm disappointed in not being able to get through and let's get this done. And if it relies on a planning scheme or omnibus to get this done, I, that's, I'm totally disappointed. Um, I thought it was going to get done and we were going to help the developer get this done because we need the land for houses. And it gets moved into this whole, a, a great document that we need to, no, I need to know a bit, understand a bit more. But we, Made a, made a decision some months ago, and now we're going back old ground, as Groundhog Day it is, old ground again. Just want the, the officers, and I really get disappointed in the plan, the planning of, of the state and the state government. We are elected. We are elected to make decisions for this council. That's been out there since 2018, 19, and that's five years. So we're elected and it just runs around in circles. Now, notably that we've been back for the last two years and had the um, commissioners before that. But I keep coming back to the situation as that why do we go and have local government councillors? Why do we have elections? Why are we here to make decisions for the constituents? And, and get a, things going. Things don't go in a, in a timely manner or get things done properly if we just wait and wait and wait. So I'm um, all for this. Uh, and I've, I've heard, heard that Councillor Lovett talked about a young fellow who bought some land in another area of town. 
and that's just been hanging on because it, it's it's got to been zoned differently and it's right in residential be zoned differently and it just needs to happen and this omnibus will take this person another year or two years down the track that's about 30 houses so are we do, do we want to build or don't we want to build Time uh, council thank you Thank you, Councillor Murphy. Anyone else would like to speak to this notice of motion? I'd just like to say one thing. I know it's been there's been issues, CFA reports, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Another reason why I think the bill was a good idea because Tony's did not have an opportunity to respond to a letter from the CFA that arrived on the 10th of November, the payments didn't receive this letter until the 16th of December of 12, 29. So there was not enough time for the proponents to respond to the letter from the CFA, which was critical in the whole issue of their development. That's all I have to say. I'd like to put it for the vote for all in favour of the notice of motion. Unanimous, thank you. 9.2, notice of motion. Um, Councillor Chris Meadows Taylor, Passenger Rail Advocacy, Mirabara Sector. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, with your approval, I'd like to move part one to five of the motion be as read rather than read out, because it simply deals with a series of decisions, conversations, and proposed acknowledgements that have taken place in order for, for brevity. I'd like to perhaps start page six if that's okay, yes. or part six. A part, a part six resolved to consolidate and update the council's priority passenger rail advocacy priorities to the Victorian government as follows. A, providing an added weekday service each day, leaving Maryborough for Melbourne weekday mid mornings and returning from Melbourne mid evening. B, activating Mikey at an early stage, noting that under the government's proposed fare reduction program, Mikey connectivity creates added fare reduction benefits. C, recognising that Mikey activation is not possible, then implementing other easy access ticketing arrangements and or making other transitional arrangements, including easier access for smaller communities along the very bar sector where ticket purchase arrangements are more difficult. D, extending station access arrangements, including ticket hall waiting and toilet access for passengers arriving for the early morning service departing Maryborough Station. E, monitoring and reviewing the timing of the added weekend services by the Department of Transport and Council, with a view to assessing if there's a benefit in a subsequent timetable change, enabling the morning departure from Melbourne and the afternoon return from Maryborough to be both one hour later than currently scheduled. F, allocating government funding for uh, public relations and marketing of the new visitor experiences for destinations along the Maryborough sector with the new weekend services which is created, adding access to in order to, to develop added visitation and boost passenger rail patronage in the sector. G, ensuring the government is aware of the importance of enhanced passenger rail services to council and our community including the emphasis councillors place on the development of the Ballarat Maryborough Growth Corridor. And seven, advise the Minister for Public Transport, the Honourable Ben Carroll MP, and Martha Hayler MP, the member for Ribbon accordingly. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mayor. Uh, can we have a second of this motion? Councillor Lovett. Councillor Meadows, would you like to speak to this? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, earlier, uh, some, a few months ago, uh, Council endorsed a broad ranging uh, letter to government, a number of ministers, concerning various aspects of rail advocacy, including freight, Mary Barra Station, passenger rail. That's moved into different directions and being dealt with by different ministers and, and in different uh, different environments. This deals sub, uh, purely with the issue of passenger uh, services and advocacy. And in terms of talking about priority, it picks up the issues that were actively under discussion during the election time frame. It is not all embracing. It is not a total ask of government. Uh, lots what I would expect would follow. Clearly, we're very under under resourced in relation, let's say, to the ARAT sector and other sectors. This is simply to pick up the immediate priorities 
things that were actively under discussion during the election cycle. And the things that I've mentioned there are all part of that process. The added, the added uh, weekday service is very much needed. Mikey activation, uh, very desirable, making it easier, more convenient. If that's not possible, alternative arrangements. Ticket hall waiting, we have a lot of complaints about very bitter cold winter mornings and not being able to, uh, to have access to the ticket hall and uh, that is of concern. The weekend services we value and welcome, but there is very real concern by some of the rail bodies and, and the tourism uh, people that perhaps that service is leaving Melbourne one hour too early and returning from very about too early in the afternoon. Uh, we do want, and we, we have asked, Council has asked the Department of Transport, we're now asking the government in this motion for funding to really promote those new weekend experiences, to bring more people in, to spend more money and visit our beautiful Shire and the other destinations along the way, uh, and also to boost the added services because we need that. And finally, yes, a passenger rail and the continued development of more services, which the government, which this council no doubt will push with the government, is a critical issue. It's, it's a critical element of our uh, of the Maryborough uh, Ballarat Growth Corridor. Uh, we need we we need to do that. Uh, we need to continue those services to keep our connectivity. So, so and the final part is simply that we we put this to the Honourable Ben Carroll, the Minister of Public Transport, and Martha Hallett, the newly elected uh, member for Ripon, who's they've both been part of these discussions. So I think this is the next stage of consolidating and building what is a very important rail, passenger rail service for our sector and the future of our show. Thank you, Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Um, Councillor Lovett, would you like to speak to this? <laughs> <laughs> I need my Peter's ice cream. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Councillor Meadows Taylor has an extensive track record regarding passenger rail advocacy for the Miraburra sector. I would go as far as to say that he was responsible for the return of passenger rail to Miraburra in 2010. In the intervening years, he then facilitated additional weekday rail services. And as we've seen from the recent state elections, the government have committed additional weekend services that pleasingly are now in place and taking place. One of the negatives of the Miraburra service has been the lack of a Mikey facility. We're told it's currently being looked at. I personally can't understand a lack of action as Mikey has been a complete disaster from day one, and that's many years ago. In Sydney, they have an Opal card that can be used on all public transport, trains, buses, and ferries. The system is seamless. You can now use your personal credit card to swipe on and swipe off on any of these facilities. In Hong Kong, they have an Optus card, the same as Sydney, trains, buses and ferries, with a maximum trip fare of $2.30 Australian. One of the excuses used for the problems with Mikey is the large numbers of travellers, which is actually a joke, because in Hong Kong, 7 million travellers take trips daily, much more than we see in Melbourne and Victoria. I, I thoroughly support Councillor Meadows Taylor's notice of motion and I hope it's successful through his continued ad advocacy for our rail services. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Anyone like to speak to the notice of motion of Councillor Meadows Taylor? I'll put that to a vote. All in favour of the notice of motion Unanimous. Thank you. There are uh, any urgent business? There are nothing. Confidential business? There is nothing. nothing. 
And I will now firstly apologise with the meeting start of later. We've got the best experts, technical experts in Victoria, but you cannot guarantee cyberspace. So I apologise for the late start for the issues accordingly. Good night, everyone. Have a great session. Bye for now.